Hello viewers and listeners, we're back for another movie review, and guess what, we're back on Bond. Now I know, I know, I tried to put this off for as long as I possibly could, but we knew this day would come, but we had to come back and do another Roger Moore Bond movie. So here we are, and we're doing Octopussy. And we're all looking forward to it, aren't we? Yeah! I have with me Justin Smear, as per usual, and we're all raring to go. Let's get on with it. And it's snowing. <sighs> let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Okay. The weather oh, outside is frightful. <laughs> <laughs> So the synopsis of this movie, um, MI6 or MI5 come into possession of a fake Fabergé egg and Bond is obviously called in because he knows everything about everything on the planet and um, also the death of a 009 agent as well. So obviously they're a little bit peeved, they want to find out what's going on. So Bond is sent to go and find out what's happening and he discovers a uh, international jewellery theft going on uh, run by some woman called Octopussy. And actually, it turns out that it's a cover-up for a nuclear plot. So, that's the synopsis. Now, cast. Now, obviously, Roger Moore is in this, uh, playing Bond. Who else? <laughs> Maud Adams makes a return, and she plays Octopussy. Octopus. Uh, Louis Jordan, he plays Kamal Khan, who's kind of the lead villain in this. Uh, Christina Wayborn, who plays the sidekick to Khan. Um, I can't pronounce this guy's name. Kabir Bedi? Kabir Bedi? Kabir Bedi. Hmm, okay. Um, there's Gobinda, which I think is the, the sort of the lead henchman. He's the heavy and he's the big guy that sort of just ends yes. up beating everybody up and murdering people. The big, the big seat guy. Bur <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, Stephen Burkhoff as General Orloff. Um, I should probably mention that we've also got um, the other guy there, Walter Gotell, who plays General Gogol. It's probably worth mentioning him because he's been in a few previous movies. Very reoccurring. Yes. Um, right, that's the cast. You forgot What's the young name? blonde lady. What young blonde lady? Um, Octopus and Sidekick. Who's that? Christine or something, the one that... Uh... Yeah, I said her. No, she's, she's a sidekick for the Khan, isn't she? She does all the sort of the dirty work and stuff and ends up bedding Bond to get information out of him and steal yeah. the egg. So that's yeah, where the confusion... Christina yeah. Raybond. Yeah, so that's where the confusion is. She's actually sidekick for Octopussy, but we'll come to that a little bit later on. Okay. Well, let's come to it now, Samir. Let's go for your facts. Coming to Octopussy, um, it's quite interesting facts. I haven't got that many facts, but I've got the interesting facts, I, I have to say. Um, I don't know if you guys... Hang on, hang on. Is that really, really fast and loose with the word interesting, or is mm. it... I shall not... It's po impossible to... I shall not possibly comment on that whole chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. At this point, I have a thing, right? I reckon Samir's facts would probably be more interesting than the movie itself. There you go. That's yeah, right. probably. Well, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> okay, coming back to the facts before we get carried away. As you know, Roger Moore actually only signed a free, initially a free... Uh, movie mm -hmm. deal with the Bond producers. And he always used to play this chess game of negotiations, etc. And when it came to Octopus, the same sort of thing happened. But this time, they actually got fed up of it. And have you heard of someone called Ian Overly, who actually played this, uh, uh, the saint in The Return of the Saint? Uh, he basically took over from Moore as the saint. I mean, 10, 10 or 15 years after the saint was initially uh, stopped in the uh, mid again? Ian Ogle Olavi Ogilvy 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 yeah Ian Ogilvy yeah, yeah I know the name Ogilvy because they own a massive um, international media marketing company but and that is his sure uncle not the same person that's that his uncle, uncle. Right, so they are connected yeah right, he went yeah. to Eton as well uh, so right. he's got a very famous what family. a mess what a mess <laughs> and at the same time 
Tim Dalton, Timothy Dalton was uh, basically considered as well. But those three guys, although they were considered, they were never offered the job of Bond. But the person who was actually draw, uh, uh, offered the job was James Boleyn, the American actor, the oh, father yeah, of... yeah, yeah. yeah. He was in Goonies. Which, yeah, uh, his son was in the Goonies. Yes, that's right. Hmm. Uh, and he was in uh, Money Never Sleeps, Wall Street as well, and he's done other some big parts recently as well. Oh, yeah, and he played George W. Bush in W, his son did. Right. Okay, so James Boleyn at the time was the up-and-coming star of Hollywood and pretty famous, and he had a transatlantic uh, accent, so his was in between. Like um, the other person who had that was Cary Grant. But that was like 40 years, 40 plus years before uh, James Brawlin, although James Brawlin's accent was slightly more American than Kerry's. Bro- Samir, but Brolin. Brolin, Bro- yeah. Brolin. Brolin, yeah. Yeah, Brolin. Not, not Berlin, Brolin. Not Bro- not Brolin, it's not like Brolin, Brolin, Brolin. That's Jolene. Ah, Jolene, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Brolin. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, doesn't matter how I say it, mate. It's probably a Swedish name, isn't it? Bolin. Uh, anyway, uh, so he got the part. He found a house in London. The contracts were actually typed up. And then suddenly they got the news from America that Sean Connery was coming back and never say never again. So they went back to your favourite uh, James Bond guys, Sir Roger My Moore. Favorite, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And said, we'll offer you so much a uh, massive deal for two Bond movies. Obviously, he turned around and said, uh, yes, okay, I'll sign on. And that's how we ended up with, actually, Roger Moore back as Bond because of Never Say Never Again. So anyone who's not a big fan of Roger Moore and finds his movies really boring or upsetting or stupid, Blame it on Sir Sean Connery because he came back in Never Say Never Again. Otherwise, we could have basically been out of the Moore era much earlier than we were. You know, you were talking about where the actual, uh, you found the story a little bit mixed. Uh, basically, Octopus itself was taken from a collection of short stories, which was a mix of Living Daylight and Octopus itself. And that's why the plot was, the actual plot was original, but they mm. took bits out of both stories, although Living Daylight ends up being a separate movie, two movies down the line. I don't know if you know this, but uh, there was a scene which was also inspired by the lady of the, um, the property of the lady, and the actual mm. uh, Fabergé egg was called that as well. And that was going to be Tim Dalton's third, and, uh, third movie of his original contract, um, before the legal wrangling stopped him making the third one and Golden Eye came out five years later or six years later. So that was actually uh, was going to be a movie as well uh, for Tim Dalton. So that was also taken from a short story. So there's three stro- short stories in one um, movie. Okay, so number uh, my next fact is the Roger Moore heart problem. He had a heart scare on uh, set. And they had to stop uh, making the movie for a while. And then he asked um, the beautiful Swedish lead, her boyfriend, basically, uh, who was a doctor, to check, give him a second opinion. So they did all the ECGs and all the different sort of tests. And he came out with flying colours and said, no, you don't have to stop. You're fine. You can carry on making this movie. And they carried on making... Uh, this wonderful movie, as I can tell, that both of you really loved it from uh, the way you're finding this flex interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the most interesting <laughs> thing was the Fabergé egg scenes were actually real. And that was the actual egg that was actually designed by Peter Carl Fabergé for um, the um, celebration or coronation of the Tsar Nicholas II. So how did they get that? And we just asked the Russians to borrow it. I think um, if you know, I know you probably, you guys will probably know this, but I think some white Russians, so there were the uh, aristocrats 
And you had the red Russians who were the communists and you had the white Russians who were aristocrats and uh, mm. upper class. Some of them sneaked out quite a lot of um, valuables from Russia uh, during the uh, revolution. Um, <clears throat> So, all right, so, that, we, so we just put it in this film so that they won't mind. Don't worry about them. They'll be all right. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll just use this exactly. real Faberge. Um, yeah, fuck it. But anyway, coming back to oh. what it was, it was uh, the point I was making about the Faberge ad. It was some of the aristocrats who actually, who were the dukes and whatever else, uh, sneaked out quite a lot of um, diamonds and necklaces and all of that um, from Russia. Obviously, there were quite a lot of things that were left behind. Sure. I mean, they were a bit too big to shove up your ass, weren't they? <clears throat> yes. I'm sure they gave it a good go if they needed to. Well, I mean, say, so you probably, uh, if you did try, um, would have burst something inside and you would have died anyway. So, um... <laughs> anyway, I've gone through all the facts and facts. <laughs> Is that <laughs> it? That's God, it. Uh, as I said, right. not that many uh, facts this evening. Okay. All right. Well, I was I wrong. could bore you with some more, but that I was wrong. Thinking. I thought the Tarzan swing was much more interesting than that. Mm, yeah. Fuck oh, it, hell! <laughs> what copied and pasted fucking folio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, oh, well, you know that Christina dear. basically, if you know, she uh, did her own stunt with the sari when she uh, comes uh, jumps off Roger Moore's bedroom uh, uh, well, window. Well, that's, that's not technically true. She did the last three feet. <laughs> No, she broke her toes doing that. Yeah, the last three mm. feet. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, even Amazing. three feet or four feet, whatever. But yeah, she yeah. did some of it. So that was quite interesting. Amazing. What a fucking yeah. hero. Right. And, so but anyway. another fact I want to really, really oh, just say. Okay, go on in. Not every person in India basically are flamethrowers, <laughs> wear saris, sleep on nail beds. And another thing, another frame <laughs> throw in the market. Did you notice? It was a guy actually polished. He was dark, and if you look carefully, he was a European <laughs> guy actually with a shoe polish on. I noticed it for the first time today. <laughs> what, because they couldn't find enough Indians in India? Can't be, yeah, surely. Uh, funny. Yeah, funny. Yeah, I'm not joking. It wasn't in India, though, was day. it? Although there is there is a there is a fact about that actually because they you know a lot of the filming did happen in India in fact they found a location where the floating palace was um, yeah, which right. was a hotel um, you know a, a prince he was actually doing it up at the time uh, which is where all the film crews they actually all stayed uh, he welcomed them in and properly looked after them all but they they found all the locations in India within ten minutes of each other um, Correct, and yeah. they wanted. Uh, I think it was like 5,000 extras, uh, but literally everybody turned up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because over uh, there, yeah. even uh, when they're making uh, uh, local movies, that's a problem yeah. they have. Well, it so is, when... and actually, I'll, I'll put this one into the facts, actually. I'll just add, a, I'll just add one extra fact, seeing as it is actually a fact. The, yeah. um, as they're doing the chase scene in the uh, Willie's Jeep and the tuk-tuk, uh, the cyclist that comes up between them is unscripted. Um, to, to talk about the, the, the problematic of having so many people. Uh, it was actually a bystander and he got in the way, um, but it looked so real uh, that they kept it. But okay. yeah, which you're, is why he looks so shocked. Got it. And if you look at it, he looks at the camera as he comes up. <laughs> but yeah, but even like the jokes uh, <clears throat> were awful, to be honest with you. But anyway, we'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we've done yeah, we'll the facts. S- mm. Save that. We'll save yeah. the. Um, yeah. But yeah, I want right. you to guys to go back and look at that flamethrower because I'm telling you, <laughs> it's some European guy who has been. I, I will look punched. at that again. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> I know it's for the first time, uh, and I've seen the movie half a dozen or more times, so, and I've got what? what? What's going on? Some guy in blackface. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so and they've not done a great job as well because you can tell. Yeah, be the next movie to be cancelled. Put that on the hit list. Don't oh, let shit. Twitter know mention. about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. He ruined it. So, yeah, Twitter will just be on fucking fire now. Damn. Right, go on in, Justin. you got anything exciting for us. Of course he fucking has. Look at him, look. Go on in. Opening scene um, with, the, um, with the jet. So, absolutely brilliant opening scene um yeah. filmed on location in a in a real hangar um but also filmed on uh, a perfectly built um one third scale uh, at um pinewood 
Uh, and of course, you can't fly a jet. I mean, the jet existed; it still does, uh, although it doesn't necessarily have folding wings to it. It's a fixed wing uh, jet, yeah. so the jet is real. But they they did that it was a bit shit with the whole fucking horse box. Horses ass. Yeah, the, the horses, horses ass. I thought yeah. that that was a beautiful metaphor. I really did. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> the only decent part of that was the bird in the in the uh, convertible Range Rover, which, by the way, uh, never actually went into production. The convertible Range Rover. The, the most interesting part was was her, you know, showing you saw a little bit of panty uh, in that, which was rather which was rather pleasant. I was I was hoping for a little bit of a uh, little bit of fluff. Was that particular scene supposed to be based in Cuba? Yes, uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So anyway, so they 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 wanted to film this this thing because obviously the guy <coughs> we assume the guy had um, his uh, doppelganger, the real guy. Uh, he he was tried to doppelgang had found the bomb that he had placed in the nose of the jet. So. That was the assumed thing. So, of course, Bond wanted to think, well, I've still got to blow this place up. So he thought, oh, okay, well, what I'll do then is I'll, I'll fly through the hangar. Uh, and, of course, this missile will come and blow up the, the barn. So they thought, well, how are we going to do this? Because you can't physically fly a jet through. So um, what they I, did I what could... yeah, what they did was that they put the jet um, on uh, a pole and then attached it to a car. And basically got the car to drive through with the jet on the pole. Um, and the camera angles were supposed to be good enough at the ground level watching it that you couldn't see the car, although you could if you... I mean, the thing is, of course, with these films, later on technology allows you to, to slow things down to slow motion or frame by frame, um, yes. etc. Uh, so you can see the car from time to time, but more typically you can see the pole. There's quite a lot of sort of small ones. So you're talking about the Indian thing, about the flamethrowers and all the rest of it. I mean, did Bond, <laughs> does Bond actually know that he, he's got his own personal theme tune? Uh, uh, you must, must, must you fucking mention that because that is one of the notes that I've got. I thought, have we broken the fourth wall here? You know, yeah. We, yeah uh, I think we yeah. have. Does, does, he, does, he, does he wander around singing that tune in his head, thinking yeah, I'm yeah, 007? Just in his <laughs> head. Or is he sneaking around the wall? He's going, dun, 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 gotcha. It's just, um, it's constantly on repeat on Spotify. It's just constantly on repeat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that was, Paul's right. that was shit. Uh, that was absolutely rubbish. Now, VJ, who, go on, Paul. I was just going to say that that bit reminded me immediately of two other bits in Bond movies. That was the um, Sean Connery wink at the end of Never Say Never Again. Hated that, huh. yeah. And the George Lazenby look at the camera. That wouldn't have yeah. happened to the other guy. Yeah. Very, very Stop. Disney. <laughs> Stop it, yeah. Stop yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It was it was stupid. Um, yeah, so VJ... Um, Obviously, the Indian, the Anglo Indian guy um, who played him before he started filming that, he wanted to know whether those cobras or pythons, whatever they were, uh, had been defanged, uh, etc. And the because they were using uh, extras and, and they were <clears> actually <throat> using real people who would otherwise do the snake charming thing. So, yeah, so they weren't sure. So, he, the, which is why he was nervous handing that basket back over yes. because it was like, I. Apparently it is, apparently it isn't, but look, have it because I, I don't really, I don't really want it, sort of thing. Um, but the, most of them are uh, milked, as they call them. They, they, uh, they milked, yeah, that's a prostate yeah. thing. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's what the term is when you uh, uh, be yeah, poisonized. Uh, yeah, yeah viewers, it's please milking. don't, please don't put milking into a Google search, particularly if you're under milking, eighteen. Milking, milking of prostate. Yes. Um, I don't know what <clears throat> moving on. Uh, but in, in Q's thingy where they're, they're walking through, etc., cetera, um, the guy with the um, uh, the door. Uh, the, oh, the, Smithers. The no, 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 no. Not, the, not Smithers. Um, uh, they, where, they, where they had the door and it, and it sprung open and, and, and skewered the guy behind the, uh, behind the door. Yeah. yeah, that was... Yeah, yeah the, what, the dummy, basically, you mean... Yeah, thing. yeah, but the, but the guy that Bond is talking to, yes, um, Smithers. Oh, right, okay. Uh, well, that he was um, more famously known for playing Boba Fett. He was he was Boba Fett in Star Wars. The guy on the nail bed, very uh, didn't even try hiding that, which is what I found really obscure. Uh, when he threw him onto the nail bed, it was clearly rubber nails. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you spotted that. It was that was really bad. Yeah, the way it, it was, bounced, it, it was obvious probably, that it, it was yeah, clearly it was obvious. obvious that that, yeah, because yeah. you're not. Yeah, we just you're not, not going to say. Like, By the way, we're going to. Oh, it's not. For this it's not so much. It's, 
no, it's not so much that it's obvious, but if you're going to throw somebody onto a nail bed, they're, it's literally <clears> going to skewer them. They're going to have them poking out of their eyeballs and out their throat yeah. and all sorts. Not How crashing into nails. One. We've got quite long. And one of the uh, one of sort of most interesting things that I sort of um, spotted, and it caused me, and I will confess, uh, I then went on YouTube um, uh, on the internet to look at it. Uh, but the guy with the um, spinny yo-yo. Um, <laughs> oh, you mean the, the the ninja ninja? Yeah, the yeah. The, the yo-yo knife um, yeah, yeah. thing. The blade, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember all these people's names. I'm sorry. But anyway, um, previously in filming. Uh, right. So what happened is one of the scenes as he's um, falls, as he gets pulled over and falls down, you see him sort of attack. And if you look very carefully, he's wearing a cast. And I spotted it and I rewound because I actually watched this on um, uh, on a streaming channel. I, I rewound it and he was wearing a cast um, from on, on his hand and his wrist up to about here. So sort of to about here. And they'd coloured it in. And I thought, that's odd. And I rewinded it. And indeed, it, it, he wasn't wearing it at any other point. So I did go on the internet. Apparently, um, during filming, they had, on the balcony above, where he was doing it down to the bed, they had removed some support so he could get closer to to, to it. And during one of the takes, he actually <laughs> fell off yeah, and broke cool. his arm. Uh, so had seen with the tiger. This one made me laugh as well. Um, yeah. The, the original, when you see the tiger come out, is actually a tiger on a wheelbarrow. Um, they do obviously use uh, the flashings of a, of a real tiger, but that initial bit of it coming out the bush and going, oh, by that's in the tiger. Again, if you slow it down, you can't see the wheelbarrow, but it, it it's just basically a tiger mounted on the wheelbarrow. So I'm just There's it two facts the, about that. The, there's two uh, versions of a story on that, Justin, as well. One, yeah. what you've just mentioned. Another one is um, there was actually a real tiger which was not meant to be there. Um, and it just came out of anywhere when they were um, making the movie. And when Roger Moore actually does that scene where he goes, sit, he actually said that to a real tiger, and for some reason it sat down. And that was quite surprising, and that's why they kept it in there. Well, the that yeah, was I mean, one it, of the... in, terms, in terms of the sit, uh, if you yeah. notice, he, go, he actually pronounced it sit yeah, which is a, which is a, cinematic, a cinematic tip of the hat to Barbara Woodhouse. He was an English premier dog trainer. He used to use uh, the same name to gesture. Yeah, so the only thing I would say about the plane scene, other than that being a fantastic stunt, was when um, uh, when the seat guy came off the plane. You can you, Again, they didn't hide it very well. Uh, you could see, clearly see his parachute, uh, you know, the stuntman's parachute and all that attached yeah. to him. In fact, you could tell in most of that that it was all stuntmen um, playing that scene. Because, of course, how would you... There's no way the actual character, the actual characters would have even done any of that and there was no green screening in that either not not to any real effect the train uh, and i do really want to make sure we mention this one actually the um uh because there was an horrific accident uh, on the uh train filming uh with the uh with the with the stuntman martin grace um so he the, the scene where he jumps down and he's climbing along um the the side hoarding um octopusy circus <clears throat> the, the cameras are rolling in the, in the whole time. Now, typically, the uh, this track, the, the the track that was used was in this country. It's like a, I forget the name of the line now. Uh, it's where all of the German, Eastern, West German border scenes were were recreated. Uh, the stations where the the trains the circles that was all recreated was on uh, a disused um, uh, section of railway where they, you know, these hobbyists run all their steam engines and all the rest of it. They had acquired the carriages and all this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, most of the scenes uh, in Germany, the border controls where Matey Boy gets shot in the back, uh, was all was all made for the time. In fact, there, there is actually a lovely video on YouTube uh, of all the locations in Octopussy uh, then and now, um, and uh, it's actually quite cool. I, I would suggest looking at it. Anyway, as um, as Martin was coming across, they <laughs> I don't know what happened, but the, essentially the where the accident happened was on an uncharted part of the track. They hadn't actually scoped it out. Um, and the cameras were rolling on the helicopter, etc. cetera. Um, and where he was climbing along, and obviously he had his butt out as he was sort of climbing along, he didn't notice a great big concrete sign uh, coming, and it slammed him straight in the hip, um, tore off a lot of skin, broke his leg, broke his hip, but he managed to hang on. And the actual clip, you'll see it in the film, of him dangling, and later on you get the green screen of Roger Moore doing the same thing with his feet dragging along. Uh, yes. They recreate that. But that initial scene of him coming away from the trees and out and clinging on 
is actually real after he's been um, slammed by the Sting was in hospital for about seven months. Uh, and a new stuntman came in and uh, and finished off a lot of the stunts. Uh, so, yeah, he survived and he made a full recovery. The the fight's on top of the train. Matey Boy's sword um, is wobbling about as he rolls on it. It bends like a, like a <laughs> yeah. toy. Um, and one of the most interesting ones, when he goes to Q and he says, oh, I seem to have mislaid my, uh, my PPK. Um, well, he didn't actually use a PPK in this film uh, at all. Um, it, uh, it was a completely different gun, uh, which actually was also the gun used in Never Say Never Again. Not many reflections in this one, actually. He didn't spot many reflections or boom mics, etc. There was one of... The, oh, yeah, one, a, a, a whimsical one. Uh, on the uh, tourist boat that um, saves him, if you look, Cincinnati is spelt wrong. Oh, it's not, I didn't notice that. Yeah, it was missing a C. Um, and one of the production crew uh, was on was on on the boat as well, uh, just as an extra. Um, no, because I'm always concentrating on um, on that joke when that lady asks it, "Are you on our tour?" And it goes, "No, ma'am, I'm on the economy uh, tour." So uh, I'm always looking out for that awful joke. So I didn't notice that. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's, um, in Cincinnati. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, chin, it was uh, Chin Chinchinati. Yeah. Right. Well, final thoughts. To me, it's a sentimental movie because it was the first Bond movie I watched uh, on the big screen. And if I had not watched it again, I'll be honest with you, I would have said uh, it was an amazing movie, this and that. But the last half an hour, 45 minutes just dragged. And I felt it was also a waste opportunity, actually, to bring in a new Bond. Because I think although Roger Moore and the leading lady... Adams were closer in age. You could tell Roger Moore was getting old. And he wasn't... This This was the beginning of the sort of start of where he wasn't convincing, convincing as Bond. Because at 55 or 56 at the time, he's closer to a uh, sort of pension age of retiring. And he's doing all these stunts. I rather w- would have had someone younger. I would have uh, probably enjoyed if they had asked Timothy Dalton to actually take over at the time and actually had offered him the job at the time and he would have said yes and the contracts were signed before Never Say Never again was announced with Conry. Because in that, they actually played the age thing really well. Here, it's Bond just continuing as a guy who's in his mid-30s, his early 40s, when he's about 15, 20 years older than the older side of uh, Bond would be. And that, that's where I felt and let the um, the film down because it wasn't believable in places at all. Yeah, well, I think it was for your eyes only, wasn't it? I mean, he had fucking liver spots on his hands at one point, one of the shots. Yeah. I mean, right, that shit happens, but yeah, this is a film. It's trying to portray a, a younger, athletic super agent and you know you've got someone as you say who's like practically a pensioner playing around not only that you know the 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 uh young secretary at universal uh exports uh small bone and she he he gives her the flowers and then when he's walking in she's going ah oh, no no oh, offense yeah. but no no 23 year old or 25 year old is going to look at a 57 or 60 year old man like that it doesn't matter if it's James Bond or not James Bond. That's quite that's uh, th- th- on the on sort of online forums. That's quite a talked about um, part because she was also related to somebody or or other, uh, and Smallbone was also a code name for somebody in Spy Who Loved Me as well, or something or other like yeah. that. Uh, but she did look very sort of like, oh, you know, yeah, um, pathetic. Yeah, it was a bit. It was a bit sort of crap. Um, and you never see her again. The, the Money Penny never has yeah. an assistant again. It was a throwaway, bit, throwaway character. I think it was because she was, I can't remember who she was related to, but I think she was related to somebody high up or something like that. And it seems like I was like, I'll just give my daughter a chance. Just give her a bloody assistant scene or something in Money Penny's office. That would do. That would shut her up sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was also... You know, by, the, by an ice cream, you know. Yeah, it, it was like mm. even um, when Bond goes to India, basically, and that lady who sh- said, oh, your, uh, sir, your clothes have been... Um, uh, taken out, unpacked, oh, and then she yeah, opens, she and then she goes, "If you want anything else, 
Well, yeah, okay. she offers herself up. The other yeah. thing as well is like, you know, he goes out and has like a five minute dinner with that blonde yeah. woman and ends up fucking her. And then yeah. he ends up spending like 10 minutes talking to um, Octopus, the old Maud Adams, and ends up fucking her. It's yeah. just getting real tiresome now, isn't it? I mean, well, you do also have the scene as well in Q's thing with the camera, you know, where he goes in on the cleavage. Oh, yes. Yeah. And she looks all sort of, <sighs> yeah, she's like, oh, it's yeah, a, she doesn't. She's not. I mean, can you imagine doing that today? I mean, fuck. Oh, you'd be oh, sacked. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's like you'd be, you know, for all you snowflakes out there, don't watch Octopussy and fucking fast forward <laughs> that scene because I tell you what, <laughs> there ain't no one to write complaints to about that now. <laughs> well, yeah. it's like even the a scene where he's making love uh, or having sex with the blonde making lady, love. Uh, Christina. Love. And <laughs> making love, <laughs> making love. But what I'm trying to say is, it's like even when the, the French kiss scene came after the shared uh, champagne, you could tell he was struggling even to kiss her properly. I, I think that's probably because she went in like some, you know, yeah, like a, a, like a young... George snake, you know, it was, like, yeah, it was basically <laughs> a young, yeah, but it was a young lady who just had uh, loads of passion. And Roger Moore was like, as I said, a pensioner again. Oh my god, I, can't I, I think to be honest, this. she bit him on the way in because he kind yeah, of you could tell, yeah, switched back slightly where she come in. I think she must have dug her teeth in. No, but have yeah. you ever well, done that and clashed teeth? Yes, yeah, it hurts. <laughs> that, that makes you oh, shit. right? Well, um, I do have a lot of points here um but there's large sections of this movie i've just forgotten i only watched it this morning i don't <laughs> like being so fucking down about bond but i just can't I just can't do it this is so awful the tennis reference i'm glad you cleared that up to me because i don't have a fucking clue what any of that was about it wasn't explained. It was just a fucking geezer had a tennis racket one minute yeah. and it's someone over the head with it so what the fuck um, yeah, and, and every Indian stereotype as well in there. Yes. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Um, the casino scene. I mean, how repetitive are they getting? Coming back to that casino scene, they were talking oh, about that God. colonel who was left over from the Raj who stayed behind and lived in India, and he was getting ripped off by this guy, their fighting centre. And he made him look like a fool. I'm sure he would have figured it out. He's cheating after losing so much money. Maybe, maybe hmm. not, but then we all know. Well, I think it's go. supposed to sort of also be showing sort of the British is generally being a bit stupid. Yeah. Yeah, till Bond comes in. Um, I don't have many more. Um, one of the things I did actually like was Stephen Burkoff in this, right? Where he's introduced in the very first part where he's introduced, he's sat there like I was sat there and he's doing all this as well when he's talking. And I do that. And I thought, hey, it's me. My final final part on this, then, I guess, really, if, if anyone says to me, you're wrong, this film is great, I'm just going to say to them, Tarzan swing. That's it. Yes. That's it. Yeah. I, I think I think one of the most interesting things about this film, actually, that the, 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 biggest, the biggest star, actually, uh, of this film is uh, Kabir Bedi, who plays Gobinda, which is the, the Sikh uh, baddie. Yeah. But, you know, he was massive in Hollywood, Massive in Bollywood, and actually, in terms of a cast here, probably bigger and better and more well known than even Roger Moore, uh, particularly at the time. Yeah, particularly yeah, at the time, he was time. massive. Yeah, he was, he a, was and, a pin up. He was the he was what all the women gushed over uh, in Bollywood. No, he, did, he, was he was massive at the time. He was massive over here as well in the UK, was, in yeah. Britain. And yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. All the Western women, Eastern women, they used to go, "Oh my God!" Because mm. without the turban, when he just didn't have, you know, was in a Western suit. He had that um, Henry feel, basically, mm. um, but of, of uh, from Asia. Just he lived so. in Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had a house in Hampshire. Do you know that? No, yeah. I wasn't aware of that yeah. at all. Yeah. In fact, I didn't even yeah. fucking know who he was full stop. So the whole thing is yeah. a surprise to me, mate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, let's score it. Let's fucking what? What? Come on. <laughs> okay, come on, Justin. Get on with it. Okay, I'm Justin. Come on. God. Okay, I'm going to step up. I'm going to give it a six. <laughs> what? 
I just, if we were, I'm just, I'm just having my head that if we were all lined up together doing this, that Samir and I would just literally be holding our throats with blood pouring out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing us there like, <laughs> and we're all going, and that's all from us. <laughs> I just go, uh, I just, I struggle so much with it. It's just so awful. I don't understand how Roger Moore kept on getting contracts. And I have to preface it as well, right? The, the Roger Moore, the person, seemed like a great fucking guy. People loved working yeah. with him and that, and he was brilliant. But yeah. his portrayal of Bond, it makes me want to physically hurt someone. I fucking <laughs> hate it so much. Paul? I'm holding out. Come on. <laughs> You're holding out? Fuck. Um, I, I enjoyed... The stunt scenes, continuity and observations aside, I I liked the opening sequence uh, with the jet. I really liked the uh, the plane with the parachutes and uh, etc. I don't understand how him just putting his foot on the real t- rear tail uh, uh, aileron actually caused it to crash. But anyway, that side of that, um, I think the train scenes were were pretty good. Um, apart from the bit of the gorilla, I missed that bit out because everybody knows that was shit uh, and completely pointless, uh, etc. Um, but I did enjoy I did enjoy the action sequences to it, and I enjoyed the locations to it as well. Um, but I thought a lot of it was weak. I too many storylines, getting confused with the plot line, didn't really understand where the nuclear missile came from, which I thought you were going to explain in your facts to me. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm going to give it a six as well. I don't. Th- it's not as good to me as others have said they have found it. I'm going to give it a four. <sighs> wow! Well, just like really? I did with um, for your eyes only, because I just thought it was utter shit, utter shit. And uh, that's all there is really to say. Uh, the Tarzan swing scene. That's it. That's. Game over, as far as I'm yeah, concerned. Everyone's it, it, going, oh, but actually, did you consider? No, I fucking didn't, mate, because I saw the Tarzan swing bit. Well, that's it. If there was, and also, I, I meant to say, actually, in relation to the Tarzan swing, there must have been some theme with that, because, of course, you know, in, in the whole palace raid later with the circus people, where what the fuck was that trapeze oh, thing attached to? Just don't, just don't, swing, don't. You know, it, it oh. wasn't. It, those sort of things were not good, or not just good. overly yeah. Yeah. Just contrived fucking and most of them wearing bright red lycra suits and all, you know. Yeah. Talk about being inconspicuous. Just... No. Yeah, but that was nice. that was sort of that's because it was like a private thing, a uh, private, private army. army. It's a bit like a, a Chinese angels. Yeah, but, or, if, but if you're gonna take it? over um, a fortified yeah. fucking whatever it is, the last Ooh, yeah. thing you'd be wearing is fucking red lycra. Which did the... give a lot of camel toes. <laughs> No one mentioned um, speaking of octopus. No one mentioned the um, the fake tattoo from a cereal box. Oh, uh, yeah, that yeah. Just, yeah. Sh- oh, my life. Yeah. That's my that's my little octopus. Yeah. That's actually a pretty that, good um, impression. Yeah. actually. Yeah, I'll was, give you that, Samir. That was pretty. I good. Thought, I thought somebody pressed play somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. all yeah. right. So that's enough ranting about Bond. I yeah. Sorry if you like Bond viewers yeah. and listeners. I just can't fucking do it. In fact, and maybe we shouldn't have done. Maybe when we started to get a little bit fucking flaky, a little bit funny with Roger Moore, we should have just stopped. Just because, skipped by. <laughs> but then, but the, but then there might be Bond fans out there that listen to this and actually think, well, at least somebody's got the bollocks to say it because I fucking hate that film too. But because I'm a Bond fan, I can't admit it. Well, let, let's <laughs> they can let, live, let's, live um... vicariously through us. Let's put it this way. At least this Bond movie featured at least not one, not even two, was based on three, nonetheless, of actual Ian Fleming short stories. Whatever, whatever, whatever it's done in it, let's wrap this one up. So that's another Bond film done. Thank God we're getting through them now. And we've only got one left of Roger Moore, so that's something to look forward to. Yeah, um, view to a kill. Yeah, uh, channel currently stands up uh, just over 160 subscribers. So thank yeah. you, people, for subscribing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. We must be doing um, something right because people are subscribing, they're enjoying it. So, yeah, I hope so. Yeah. 
Yeah. And Samir's and Samir obviously loaded up the old internet coin meter this evening because you haven't dropped out at all. No, it's no. impressive. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have started re-uploading our videos to Bitshoot.com as well. So if you bit don't shit. like YouTube, yeah, Bitshoot, yeah, shoot. Um, oh, I thought you said Bitshit. Yeah. If you so, if you don't like YouTube because you think they're all you know censorious and what not, that well, you know just shills for corporate America. Then you can watch us on all tech platforms. Remember, we do have the podcast as well. You can find us on it, practically every single podcast uh, platform on the planet. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. That's all I've got anyway. I'm going to go and calm down and uh, lower the blood <laughs> pressure. So it's goodbye from me. Thank you all. Love you. Bye. And it's good night from me.